What would be the most exaggerated, fun way to make coffee? We are gonna take coffee, we're gonna evolve it to be what visual effects artists require. A okay. GPU accelerated cup of coffee. Until these guys can prove to me that the time they're wasting on coffee can be turned somehow into content, I'm gonna be an absolute tyrant about this. Whoa, whoa. You know, I'm here this week and I've noticed another inefficiency where people are wasting time. And it's not Smash. No, it's coffee. Dude, I have anywhere between three and five cups of coffee a day. It's it's not healthy. I'm typically like a three to four guy a day. Probably a two to three, maybe four, five, six, seven. Coffee is an art, okay? Coffee, there's a very specific process that one has to go through in order to get a good cup of joe. You wanna make some coffee? Here, look, it comes in a can, okay? You just take a scoop of it, put it in your water, and you're done. You can move on with your day. The entire process probably takes north of 20 minutes, and that's multiple times a day. And you know, this process is so long, so drawn out, that it leaves us with a lot of time on our hands to sit here and talk and dream of a better future, a better tomorrow. I only ask for eight hours of people's time a day. Now, every moment that is within that time frame that's wasted is another wasted opportunity for content. And without content, we have no business. Until these guys can prove to me that the time they're wasting on coffee can be turned somehow into content, I'm gonna be an absolute tyrant about this. Whoa, whoa! I just dream of the perfect coffee maker. It's efficient. It's creative, like yeah. us. It's, it's not just a, a generic, boring piece of machinery. It has style, it has bits and bobs, shoots and levers. Uh, accoutrement. What would be the most exaggerated, fun way to make coffee? There is a man <laughs> named Rube, and he was the inventor of the Goldbergs, mm. the TV show, and the Rube Goldberg machine. Yep. I think we That's could take bad. some inspiration. And so we want to take his vision, his idea of one button push, walk away and the magic happens and apply that here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take coffee, we're gonna evolve it, okay? We're gonna evolve the process to be what visual effects artists require. Yep. A GPU accelerated cup of coffee. Think of it, little boxing gloves on springs, little choo choo, little train, a wheels with beans on the back of it. The marble hitting <laughs> dominoes and knocking them over and then the domino falls. We wanna make that world a reality. This is art, man, this is art. We are going to put our minds together to the task of rendering this Rue Goldberg machine and making it a reality. But it's a very difficult, time-consuming task. We don't really have the time for it. I mean, it's a lot of modeling, a lot of texture work. What tools do we have at our disposal? Hey, Jordan. Hey, talk to me. Polycam. Oh! It is a 3D scanning app for your phone. I've, I've been a little 3D scanning gremlin. Anytime I go out with my friends and they see, like, there's a piece of an engine right there, they already know I'm like... I, I can't I can't stop scanning stuff. I have, I have a huge library of 3D scans of just everyday objects. It completely takes out the work of having to model things for your scenes. Because for this Rube Goldberg machine, <laughs> we could just we could just scan scan this quesarito, throw it in the render, and it's already good to go. It's good to render. 
It's so good. It's so good. Look at this. Wow. Zoom in on that. Let me see the subsurface cheese. Look at that cheese. detail. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my gosh, it's so Dang. good. It eliminates all of the modeling and all of the texturing and, and all of that grunt work that's associated with getting photo real renders. Once we scan all the stuff, then we have it forever. Now we have a catalog of hundreds of 3D models that you can use for eternity. So guys, I think if we use Polycam, we can successfully, in a short amount of time, render the coolest, most intricate coffee machine maker Rube Goldberg thing in the history of mankind. Okay, so let's take some time to map out how the machine would actually operate in the space of the kitchen, and then from there we can start blocking out the scene in 3D. We're gonna dedicate some time, we're just gonna clear the schedule. I'm not gonna tell Jake, we're just gonna do it. So we've been at work for a couple days now, and we've made some tremendous progress. I'm really happy, me and the team here. We've all separated and taken on our own individual tasks yep. to help make this dream a reality. Yep. Fenner took care of the layout, finding and sourcing such beautiful little creations to put into our world. I don't know how you found all that stuff. How did you find all that stuff? Using Polycam's explore page. There are so many weird little scans on there. Peter's gone ahead and gotten started on the character animations, our little scans, rigging them up and making them do all sorts of little goofy things. And yeah, Jordan has been doing a bunch of the simulations for this. So we have like our beans sliding through, water pouring out, all the different aspects you need to make coffee. Okay, sweet. So Jordan, uh, oh, and Peter, uh, come on yeah. up here. Okay. So I've got the scene kind of blocked out in Blender right now mm -hmm. with all of our nice polycam scans in there. Oh, wow, yeah, dude, this looks sick. Uh, I'm starting to block in the camera animation uh -huh. now that we sort of have the rough outline of our different events that we have happening here. Oh, this is uncomfortable. It's our water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't do this anymore. Okay. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> so anyways, so what do you guys yeah. think? It's looking... Dude, it's looking friggin' awesome, man. We're gonna blend into this animation and out of this animation from a real-world plate, but we haven't shot that yet, so it makes it very difficult to animate the camera. Uh, so right now, I think our game plan while we're all here is to shoot that plate, so we'll have that perfect loop. We were thinking it might be fun to have the kind of reveal of our full bodies, and you see the whole Rube Goldberg machine in that That would be cool. Right? So if we're like here, and then basically Dean could come up, come up, come up, and then kind of come into the phone screen. Just try a couple different versions of spilling the coffee so that Fenner has a reason to make you a new one. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. And action. Uh, ooh, thanks. Ooh, thank you. Oh no. Ooh, thanks. <laughs> Good shot. What? It's all good, man. I'll make you another. I could have sworn they were here. I'm gonna catch those guys. So we've been using some awesome assets from the Polycam Explore page, but we're getting to a point now where I really wanna, you know, add in kind of iconic props from Corridor shorts and different shows that we've done before. So of course I had to choose this uh, awesome X-Wing helmet that Natalie and I made. I'm just kind of walking around, I'm using the manual photo mode. It's one of those things where 3D scanning and photogrammetry has been around for a long time, but it was always such a hassle, you know, gathering your photo sets and you had to do it all manually. The nice thing with Polycam is it kind of takes all of that manual labor out of it and allows you to just be scanning and creating really freely. It's kind of like a new form of photography. When I was moving down from Vancouver to LA, we drove down the Pacific Coast Highway and I was actually doing scans all along the way. And it's, it's really cool because you can go back and experience those worlds in 3D space. And there's a bunch of really cool stuff that Polycam's doing. You could check out the Cerro Gordo video that Cordor actually did previously, where the crew went up there and they scanned some really cool mine shafts in this old abandoned town. And there's also a really, really cool project called Backup Ukraine, where people are basically going around Ukraine and they're scanning different kind of historical artifacts, just different pieces of architecture uh, because of the events that are going on there to kind of have a, almost a, a 3D archive of the environment there. 
Using Polycam, it's not just something that you can use for VFX, it's something that you can use for architecture, game design, all sorts of things. Polycam's actually starting a Polycam Creators program where if you show off how you use Polycam and other software, you can apply and get an official creator badge on your Polycam profile. You just need to make a video for any kind of Polycam tutorial or showcase. Make something cool and explain how you did it, kind of like this Rube Goldberg machine. You'll see our personal profiles on there and you can actually save and download all of the captures that Jordan and I created for this video. All right, so that's it. Make something cool, get featured, go to poly.cam slash creators. So I'm gonna finish up a few more scans, throw them up in my Polycam profile and then see about bringing them into our 3D Rube Goldberg machine. I noticed they've been working on something all week, but I'm not sure what it is. They better not be wasting time, otherwise the Texas hammer's gonna come down on them hard. Let me just get this out of the way real quick. Jan is coming in and uh, ever since he got that nerf finger, he's been a problem. But Matt gets it. While I do this, do you mind just covering me? Yeah. Maybe dual wield, that's pretty dual sick. Okay. People are into that now. For me, you know, when I think of a Rube Goldberg machine, I think that there has to be some sort of grounding for that machine to feel like a working machine. There has to be some working physics in it. That's kind of what I'm tackling over here in my neck of the woods. And in total, I've got 12 simulations to do to make this machine work in the way that we want it to work. In a working machine, all of these elements would exist for the entire duration, right? If it was a working machine, it would be a lot, lot, lot more complex to make. And so what we want to do in the time that we have, we want to simplify, we want to cut corners, we want to hide stitches. If you don't see the seams in the working machine to the viewer's eye, it doesn't really matter. Now, when it comes to simulations like this, there are certain simulations you can do where you can really just push play and watch it work. Like the beans coming down from the front gates all the way till they land in the cart, that works on its own. And that's great because at the end of the day, it's just a matter of friction, velocity, and bounce. But once they're in the cart, this was the first element where we ran into some issues. The initial idea for this section was actually for the beans to fall in and slowly weigh down the cart, dropping the plank, dropping the wagon, and all moving together. It wasn't until I got into the simulation portion that I realized that was quite a bit tricky because all of a sudden you've got a couple different simulations that need to work in tandem. So I thought it was actually best to separate those different things and execute them all individually. Why not simulate the weight of the plank dropping from one end to the other as its own thing? Now that we have our finished sim of the plank dipping one way, we can now place in our cart that is ready with working wheels. The cart is just simply reacting to the dropping of the plank. So now that will roll down and they don't need to interact with each other. Uh, finally, the beans coming down into the cart. Uh, we can wait until all the beans are into the cart to start the simulation of the cart going down. These are now three separate simulations that so looks like it's all working together, but really it's just a cheat. If I were to put all of those into one mechanism, and try to get it to work together, that would take so much more time to fine tune each element. And that's kind of the thing with all of these simulations, right? We've got, I mean, I don't even know how long this full thing is gonna be yet, but it's quite a long machine. It's quite a long process. And there's so many dead gaps of space where simulating would be a total waste of time, like all the liquid simulations, for example. We don't need the water to pour into the bucket, sim it still in the bucket as it moves all the way down the zip line and then have that same water spill out the bottom. Instead, we can kill the water once it's in the bucket and then just emit new water once the axe cuts into the bottom. Oh, shoot! Anyone? Any takers? I already got you. Matt, what happened? I'm dead. Did he get you? No. He didn't get you? No. Is it loaded? I'm actually kind of in the middle of something. I'm doing the breakdown for the video, so yeah. It's not loaded, Matt. I told you. You set me up, man. Kill yourself. I gotta do this. So the simulation. <laughs> When you're working in simulations, it's very easy to set up a system that can absolutely get away from you. And so by segmenting this simulation out, I now have a lot more focused control over each element in this final render than I would if every single one relied on every single other one. 
So we've got our simulations done, right? We've got our rigid body, we've got our particles, we've got our flip fluid sims, all nice and done. And we are gonna pass them back over into Blender. And once that's done, we're gonna pass it over to Fenner, who's going to comp the heck out of those darn things. Fenner, you got this, buddy. Thanks, Jordan. So a big part of this video is Jordan, Peter, and I working in tandem. That involves bringing a lot of different individual elements all together for this final image. And the way we're doing that is using the Foundry's Nuke and combining everything we've created in comp. So one of my favorite things that was added into this video, Peter basically took those photo scanned versions of ourselves and he created these little dudes throughout the entire environment. It turned out great. My favorite one here is Jordan jumping on the plunger and then falling off. <laughs> It's like those little touches that I think bring it to life. So even though Jordan was able to run a bunch of awesome simulations for this piece, we just didn't have enough time or bandwidth to make sure every single element was gonna be a CG render. So for the stuff like the fire, I basically took some geometry from my blender scene and I was able to use 2D elements from Action VFX and use them as textures on cards in 3D space. Our simple geometry of our fire pit is now stenciling our fire elements, which gives us a really, really nice look. Basically being able to add that stuff in comp allowed us to add in extra levels of spice after the final render's already been done. So if we find an area where like, oh, that just needs a little bit more dust or something, we're able to add that into the scene without having to re-render this massive, you know, 2000 frame long blender scene. So with all satisfying renders, I've learned that the most important part is a satisfying loop. So with those plates that we shot in the kitchen, that essentially became our transition in and out point. We punch into our polycam coffee maker phone and go through our render. And then at the tail end, we basically transition out by going from our CG scene and morphing, kind of warping to us all in the kitchen again, talking about our coffee. So it's this kind of idea of transitioning into the polycam 3D world and then back to our real world because polycam is used to basically scan the real world and bring it into the computer. We're kind of doing the inverse of that. So there's only a few things left to do in this video, but I think our cover might be blown. It seems like Jake might be onto us. So I guess we'll just have to show him what we've got right now without any, you know, sound mixing or anything in there. Yo, listen, man, uh, I see what you've been doing out there. I've been seeing the way you guys do that coffee thing. And, uh, I want to get in on that, so. Oh, yeah, well, okay, man. I sound designed the whole thing. What? I just, I, I, I was looking from over there. I was just kind of peering, just doing my thing. There's like a, oh, there's like a lawnmower thing there, a little bean action. That's so much work. Yeah, I, I actually got it, I got it right here. It's a uh, full mix mastered, oh exported. I think Jake's really gonna love this. Yeah, thanks, man. Godspeed. So, uh, that was weird, but I'm gonna plug the sound design in and you know, we'll show it to Jake and show him that all this time we wasted wasn't for nothing. There's been a lot of tension at the office recently with Jake and us about us wasting time and daydreaming and, and thinking up silly fantasies that we wanna make real. But today, guess what? What? We're done. It's real. It's out of our head and it is on the canvas and we're ready to show Jake to show him what can happen when you turn that daydream into a reality. I'll, I'll tell you what happens. Dreams come true. Dreams come true. Dreams turn into JPEG sequences. <laughs> Jake. 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 Come on in here. Jake. What are you doing? We have something to show you. What do you mean? We we have a JPEG sequence for you. Of it what? Is. It's, it's an animation, We just come sit down, we wanna show you something. So we know that you've been unhappy with us making coffee and daydreaming and giggling and just being youth, you know? And we went ahead and we took some time out of our schedule without informing you and put all of our dreams into the computer together as a team. We turned our coffee into content. Okay, well, show me what you did because I don't know what is going on here. So this better be good.
Good man, I'll make you another. You know, actually, guys, I'm not even mad. Oh. I'm not. This was absolutely beautiful. Oh. Look at the color, the scanning, everything was photo scanned, which is crazy. Yeah. The design of the animation, the, the overall mechanics of the whatever this machine is that you've created makes me kind of thirsty for some coffee. <gasps> Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness. And you know what? I, I know that everyone thinks that I'm the big bad wolf around here who's just trying to like destroy all creativity. But actually, this is how the Corridor Crew Channel was created. Hmm. Really? I, I, I noticed that Ren and Carmichael seemed to be wasting time. And I said, what if we just filmed you guys wasting time? The pressure that I put on you guys and, and, and really everybody else around here I think is really what made this happen. Oh. I mean, in a way, you're you're making diamonds <laughs> from right, the pressure. The pressure, right? You know? Wow! Yeah. I, right. I just came to me. Dude. So, guys, from all of us who made this, and especially Jake, who put the pressure on us in the first place, thank you for watching. I hope it brought some joy and some levity. And you know, we should be working right now, actually. Yeah. But I think since maybe you now understand kind of where we're coming from, maybe uh, yeah. we'll go make a cup of coffee. 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 Can oh, I just coffee? Coffee. We no. I need ah. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Huge shout out to Polycam for working with us on this video. Their app is amazing. Go check them out on poly.cam. We've got a bunch of other amazing render challenges on this channel, so if you guys have not seen them, please check it out. There'll be a link in the description. And also, if you haven't seen Peter's Scooty, definitely check that out. That just dropped as well. So uh, we got a bunch of amazing videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And uh, check out what we have to offer.